I'm Jerry Mitchellick, and one of the good things about what I do for a living, Smith & Wesson sends me a lot of stuff to play with. I'm a revolver guy. That's what I do for a living. Uh, I, shoot their, I shoot their products. So I have some, some of their new products here. And this is part of their classic series. So back when I was a kid, everything was blued steel. Stainless steel guns didn't come out until, I don't know, 30, 30 years ago. So, and i give you an idea of what's going on with the classic series. This is a Model 19. It's a 4-inch K-frame 38 357 Magnum. And the reason this gun ever ever was made is that law enforcement wanted something light on the hip with the firepower with 357 Magnum. So the end frames were a little bit bulky. And if you carry a gun all day, it gets heavy. Every day, every day. So they wanted a smaller frame. So they made the K-frames into Magnums. Originally, they were 38 Special only. So this gun was designed back in the day to shoot 357 Magnums. And what they found out pretty early on that a 357 Magnum at 40,000 PSI is a lot of pressure and uh, so the, the motto was train with 38s and shoot magnums on duty. So what Smith & Wesson did recently, they did a complete overhaul on the K-frame. So these guns actually are as strong as an L-frame, as strong as an N-frame. And I'll give you an idea of what that means to you. And this is a classic series, so it has the old style thumb latch on it. It has a frame lock for the hammer, which is, you know, you have to do that nowadays. They've changed the lock assembly from the end of the uh, e uh, ejector rod to the inside of the frame. But the big thing they did, they have a tensioned barrel here. It's actually a two-piece barrel. This is an auto shroud, and it has a rifled liner in it. So when, when they did that, they could make the, the barrel shank here on the inside a lot thicker. And the way they changed the yoke dimensions on the front of the cylinder, and the way this, ma is, this is manufactured, it has as much metal now as an L as, as it does an end frame. So they're extremely strong. They can take 357 Magnum ammo without any problem. They're made to a higher standard than any Smith & Wesson ever previously made. They have MIM parts in it. I know a lot of you guys cringe when I say MIM, but the MIM parts are so uniform from one part to the other. When you get a revolver in and you want to do an action job on it, it takes minimum time to actually stone it and get it out and have a really good action job. That's what i found. I've found. I've gone through a lot of MIM guns and I actually like the way they are. So. Super strong setup. If you want to shoot 357 Magnums, you can do it till, you, till the cows come home till you, till you can't afford them, really. So the Performance Center took this blue series and they make it into a carry comp gun. And what they did, they put a, a different finish on it. It's a dull finish. It's like a bead blast finish. It has a night sight. It has a carry comp feature, so it has a muzzle brake on it, which I really like. If I can ever put a comp or a muzzle brake on a gun, I'm going to do it. It just works that much more effective, less work for you when you shoot it rapid fire so it comes with a different style of stock it comes with actually two grips on the performance center gun it's a six shot k frame 357 magnum doesn't sound like much but it's it's a great gun if you want a gun that's going to be totally totally reliable with a minimum amount of training you pick it up and shoot it it's going to always work for you if it doesn't go bang pull the trigger again it's going to happen revolvers are carried the moment for a long time they've also taken the front of the cylinder here they put a nice bevel on it so it's easy to easy to holster and and, uh, and reinsert into the holster. They've got a lot of fine touches on it. The barrel assembly, I'll give you an idea of what's going on with that barrel assembly. The, uh, the old style of fitting a barrel on a Smith & Wesson, you torque this into the frame. And if it didn't line up, you had to machine the back of this and then you had to torque it in until it timed up straight. Took a lot of fitting. The way they make them now, which is a lot better and more consistent, <clears throat> There's actually a barrel liner inside of this housing here. So when this assembly fits on the frame, it fits 100% in line with the frame. And they take the barreled liner, put it in, and torque it to the frame. So the torque is actually transferred to the front of the barrel and not at the barrel shank here. Like on the old barrel assemblies, you see it. this, this takes the force, where now the new assemblies, it's in the front. So it's under tension. It's a better way to make a revolver. It's actually a good thing. And a lot of you old guys say, well, I like the old guns. They're actually making them better than what they ever have ever made. So we're going to take these guns out and shoot them here in a little bit, give you an idea of how powerful. We, we seem to forget the 357 Magnum is a standard by which all of the handguns are judged. So back in the day, you had a Magnum, you had it all. So we're going to go out and shoot it and actually learn to appreciate the 357 Magnum again. Hey everybody, we're out on the range. I've got the PC Carry Comp Model 19 here. 
it's got like about a three inch barrel, it looks like a three inch barrel with a compensator on the front. And I've got the standard model 19 with a four inch barrel. So what I'm going to do for you, as, as tradition with us here, we just take the guns out and shoot them. So I haven't done anything, I haven't sighted them in. I've got some Hornady 125 grain American Gunner. And according to the box, they're doing 125 grain XTP, doing 1500 feet a second. So it's a lot of juice there, it ought to be fun. I'm going to come off the timer, I'm going to shoot the, uh, the carry comp gun first and get an idea. I want you to watch the muzzle and see if the compensator is working, then I'll, shot, then I'll shoot the 4 inch uh, Model 19 without the comp and you can, get, you can get a comparison to what's going on. So, Alright, let's go right into it. We've got the comp gun here, the performance center. Six rounds of Hornady XTPs, 125 Magnums, and we'll shoot the target on the left. You ready to go? Here we go. Oh! oh. <laughs> I forgot just how powerful a 357 was. I skipped one round. I just give you an idea of the recoil. Now I'm gonna shoot the four inch gun without a comp, rapid fire. On the target on the right, so keep your eyes on it. Here we go. Target on the right. Woo! That was a considerable amount of difference. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. That was a little bit more spicy there. So you get an idea the carry comp versus the regular four inch with full power 357 ammo. Compensator made a big difference. Well, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's shoot some cans of soda and a couple of water bottles to give you an idea of what a 357 magnet is all about. <laughs> <laughs> 